four foods to never eat. Here we go. This is my opinion. Remember about opinions. Remember the thing about opinion, guys? Opinions, you know, opinions are like asshole. Everybody got one, right? So some opinions, however, just simply put more informed than others. And I'd like to think that this particular opinion that I'm sharing with you here in this video is more informed than other opinions on certain foods you should eat and not eat. So here it goes. Four foods you should never eat. Number one, anything fried, anything fried, anything. I don't care what it is that you're frying, all right? Anything fried, and, and look, let me, okay. All right, all right, let me just quick, make a quick disclaimer here before I get on with the foods, right? Hmm. So, um, you know, when I say never, I'm not, t I'm like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a Nazi here and be like, never, ever, okay? Look, there's one particular thing here in these four foods that I have on average once, twice a month, okay? When I say never, um, what I mean is it's more of a clickbait thing because people click on it, right? And, and so, but I mean, just don't make a daily habit of it. Don't make it a regular part of your life. Keep it for occasions. Keep it for every now and then, every, every once in a blue moon. And if you're clean for the rest of the time, if, you're, if your diet's clean, your life is clean, yeah, if you engage in this thing once a month, once every few months, yeah, your body's going to be... You're, first of all, you're going to feel it, like especially when, when you haven't had certain these things for a while. You're going to be like, oh, that makes me feel like shit because it does make you feel like shit. Second of all, your body will deal with it, okay? I mean, if, if, you, eat, if you eat any of these things I'm going to talk about in this video, just do, do like 48 hours on water. Just do 48 hour water fast or 48 hour coconut water fast or 48 hours, like just two days, 48 hours on like cucumber juice. Yeah, your body clean it. It's okay. It's only problematic if you start to engage with it regularly. Daily or a few times a week, few, even sometimes, you know, a few times a month can start to be, get a little too much. Okay. Yeah, you know, so that, I'm just putting it out there. All right. So here it goes. That being said, four foods to never, ever eat. Never eat. Number one, fried anything. Fried foods. When you fry something, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's vegetables, I don't care if it's a fruit. Some people like to fry plantains and bananas. I don't care if it's meat. When you fry something, you create cancer-causing molecules, free, known as free radicals. The frying process is the most toxic cooking method, uh, method of cooking, okay? It is... It is. It creates the highest concentration of cancer-causing substances, of free radicals. It is extremely toxic. The, com the, the, the combination of oil, high temperature, and carbohydrates is really, really, really bad. Even if you're frying like meat, something that doesn't have carbohydrates, you're still creating a ton of free radicals, a ton of cancer-causing substances and molecules. Frying is by far, by the way, by far, the worst cooking method. You do not want to use oil, period, to cook. You do not want to cook anything with oil, period. You're way better off baking, even though baking does create, you know those brown, like when you bake bread or you bake potatoes, you know the, the, the caramelized brown things? There's like brown things that we like, that they, they taste good, right? They, they, they caramelize, they, they, it's like the burning thing on bread. You know when you, when, you, when you get bread and there's like some brown thing on it? That's cancer, okay? And still, baking is far better. And I say the word far liberally here. Far better than frying. So never! eat anything fried, okay? Just refer to my disclaimer before, of course, right? Um, if I'm going to talk personally, I maybe eat something fried a few times a year, right? On average, a few times a year, maybe three times a year or something, right? I don't know, but it's something that is very, very rare in my life, and, and I, I don't even like the taste of fried foods, generally speaking. I much rather eat baked a baked potato than a fried potato, for instance. Like, I would much rather eat a baked 
potato than French fries, for instance, okay? So, so that's one thing, okay? Again, I know it's my opinion, but it's, it's based on inf good information, let's just say, all right? Stay away from fried foods. Don't make a, a regular use of, of anything fried. Number two uh, is pasteurized milk. Now, I personally, I am not an advocate of animal products in general, okay? However, however, it's for both health reasons and compassion reasons. However, if you're going to take in animal products, if I was to take in animal products, I talk about this with my brother because my brother, he, he still loves his, he loves his meat, he loves his, his milk. All right, we talk about this and um, we both agreed if you're going to consume milk, consume it raw. Now, in some countries, it's illegal, it's blasphemy. But if you do some research, it's miles, miles, miles superior than pasteurized milk, okay? And I might even say it may have some benefits. I just think it's highly unnecessary and it's still exploiting an animal. And I personally would never do it and there is absolutely no need for that whatsoever. Um, however, pasteurized milk, pasteurized like anything pasteurized, cheese, may be, it may be the most mucus forming food group that exists as far as humans are concerned. Pasteurized dairy, pasteurized milk, pasteurized cheese, pasteurized dairy, pasteurized dairy is probably with a high probability the most mucus forming group, food group, it's not food, okay, but let's just say, say it because you know, for convenience's sake, for argument's sake, it may be the most mucus forming food group out there for a human. Pasteurized dairy. Stay away from pasteurized dairy. Okay? So that's food number two. I now personally I, I just that's a, that's a nothing for I last time I had dairy was in Georgia. So that was April of 2020. April, May, something like that. Two years ago. So two years ago. I think maybe May 2020. Uh, yeah. So stay away from pasteurized dairy if you must. If you're still on the on the on the animal product thing, on the dairy thing, opt out for some raw milk. Uh, and uh, yeah, you'll probably experience a lot less mucus, if any, from that. Some people, when they stop pasteurized dairy and they're still eating everything else they report having significantly less mucus everywhere. In their sinus, in their nose, everywhere. They just report having significantly less mucus. They're breathing better. So it, it is probably, with high probability, the most mucus forming group, pasteurized dairy. So that would be number two. Number three, chocolate. Sorry, ladies. I know, it's heart, heartbreaking. So chocolate, why chocolate? Because chocolate is like, it's, it's like drinking coffee but on steroids. Why is that? <laughs> because, so, the coffee contains this, uh, it's, it's stimulating. It, it contains a stimulant, I forget the name of the stimulant. I forget the name of the stimulant, but basically it acts on your nervous system in a similar fashion as coffee does, cacao. Cacao, right? Cacao is in coffee. It acts in a similar fashion, it's very toxic by the way, it's just same as the coffee beans, just similar toxicity, similar toxic load. And it acts similarly. It stimulates your nervous system. Um, it, 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 it adrenalizes you for no reason. It stimulates your adrenals. But the, the reason why I would say it's coffee on roids is because it has other, as other toxic things that at least coffee, well, coffee does have it. People do put sugar in their, in their coffee. See? I guess coffee and, uh, and chocolates are sim share similar things. Oh yeah, actually even people put uh, butter in their coffee. So here's the thing with, co with chocolate and why it's a pretty, like, it's, very, it's highly toxic cocktail of stimulants and, and addictive substances that keep you hooked. You have sugar in there too. So not only do you have the cacao with, with its negative stimulating effects, you have sugar in there, processed white sugar in there, and that's just like hijacking your dopamine receptors. 
you got the cacao hijacking your dopamine and adrenals. To add insult to injury, you've got butter in there or coconut oil. However, even the vegan chocolates, you know, they're pretty much doing the same thing to your nervous system. You've got the, the oil in there, the pure oil, the pure fat, the pure butter. That's not doing you any favors in as far as forming mucus in your system, in as far as stimulating your nervous system for no good reason, for no good measure. And that's why chocolate is so addictive, especially for women. I don't know why women are particularly hijacked by chocolate. Maybe because women are more sensitive, they have a more sensitive nervous system and their nervous system just gets that much more hooked into this <laughs> very lucrative, seductive combination of things, but otherwise very toxic and very addictive combination of things. So stay away from chocolate. Again, refer to my disclaimer in the beginning of the video if you must engage in it. Again, just don't make a regular use of it. Um, you'll notice uh, chocolate will cause um, heart palpitations. It will cause uh, your heart to race. Uh, same with coffee. Because they, they're just, it's way too toxic. The body's like speeding up. It's like, let's get this shit out of here. Let's get this shit out of here, folks. Let's get this shit out of here. We don't want this in here. We don't want this in here. Plus, your adrenals are stimulated. Your heart is stimulated. It's not going to do good things to your heart. It's not chocolate. It's not going to do any, any good things to your heart. Okay? Now, we could place coffee in there. It's just people don't think of it as food. But it, it is. Okay? It is. Really, it is. But let's just stick to chocolate for now. All right? So, that's number three. And last but not least, number four. Salt. So now I know some people say, um, you know, uh, it's good for hydration. Drink salt water. Look, sodium chloride is very toxic to your body. And this is why you get dehydrated after eating salty foods or drinking ocean water. You get dehydrated because it is very, very toxic and irritated, irritating to your cells. It completely throws off the hydration process in your body, it completely throws off hydration levels in the body. And you get severe, the more salt you take in, the more you severely get dehydrated. Of course, it makes sense, it's toxic, it's highly toxic. The body's saying, please, 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 give me water, I want to dilute this and get it out of my body as soon as possible. Let's get this out as soon as possible. What is hydrating is sodium, not sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is highly toxic. So how can you get sodium? You can find it in, um, in coconut water. Plenty of it in coconut water. All right. Just have a, a couple of coconuts a day and you've got all the sodium you need and more. Celery. You can eat celery. You can find sodium in small amounts in fruits and vegetables in general. We need very little amounts anyway. Our bodies are so good at extracting sodium from foods and sodium is found in a variety of fruits and vegetables in small quantities we need very little amounts of it the more efficient your body is the, the less the body will be able to extract it like a super machine just a cup of coconut water that's it you're good to go if your body's clean and efficient even that's got too much sodium in it okay even a cup of coconut water has got too much you can extract it eating some like a, like a piece of fruit that's got a, a little tiny amount of sodium in it. You can also look into sea vegetables. Okay, you can look into nori sheets. Um, dulse has a good amount of sodium. Okay, no, you do not need sodium chloride. It is a toxic substance. Toxic substance. It's sodium that's hydrating. It's sodium. It's one of the, the three essential electrolytes. Magnesium, sodium... And uh, what's the other one? Uh, potassium, which all, by the way, are found in coconut water. Look into coconut water. It's that's all. That's about all the electrolytes you need for hydration. That's about. It's it's incredibly hydrating. I'm I'm a huge fan of coconut water. I had a phase here where I was just consuming. Co I was just I was just living on coconut water. Now I like my cucumber um, lemon juice, which by the way contains sodium. Not a lot, just enough. If your body is efficient and clean. It will extract all the necessary sodium from it. Okay? 
Um, also, for the brave souls out there, you're in therapy. Oof, we're gonna lose a lot of people here in this part of the video, right? See you later, unsubscribe. Uh, but urine, because you know, your urine, urine's got all the electrolytes in it too, okay? That's for the brave souls out there. You don't have to, okay? Urine therapy is not necess a necessity. It's not necessary for health and well-being, okay? But I'm just saying, look into it. It's got sodium, it's got all the, the necessary electrolytes in there. Plenty of them too. And interestingly enough, coconut water and, uh, and urine have very, very, very similar profile, very simpler, similar composition. Very interesting. Um, anyway, so there, there it is, folks. That's the four foods to never eat ever in your life. Now, with salty things, I take in salty things. You know, I, got, I still got some of that, some of that salty addiction. Uh, maybe on average a couple of times a month. I've had periods this year. I went two, three months in a row with nothing salty in it, and then I would, I would, then I had periods where I would eat something salty once a week, twice a week. So I would say on average, I on average, and I'm just ballparking it here. I take in salty things about a couple of times a month, but I'm I'm trying to make it like a couple of times a year now. Okay, um, so I've made significant progress with that because salt is so addictive. It's so toxic. It's like heroin, man. It's like heroin. Um, I remember uh, I was off of salt sometime this year. I was off of salt for like a good one to two months, maybe a couple of months. Then um, um, my lady got this thing with, with salt in it. I think it was hummus or something, some dip or something. And I hadn't had salt for like two months. And I had a lick of it. I was like, ew, this is disgusting. And then 15 minutes later, I was like, hmm, I want more of this. I want more of this. It's like heroin. And the problem with salt, it completely hijacks and numbs your taste buds. So now you need like, you need salt. You need more flavor just to be satisfied. You know what happens when you quote salt? For just for like a week. And you start to eat just basic things like steamed uh, steam vegetables, steamed potatoes. You, you eat like a steamed potato. You're like, whoa, this is delicious. But if you're eating salt every day or regularly, you're like, ew, let's put some salt on this. Let's put some spices on this. So what salt does, it, it hijacks your taste buds and it numbs them. And when you quit it, you suddenly find things so satisfying, satisfying and pleasing, like simple things. You ever had just a steamed potato? Steamed potato? If your taste buds aren't hijacked, it's delicious, man. It's delicious. So, recap, conclusion, four foods to never eat. Food number one, fried foods. Opt out for baking, even better, steaming foods instead. Number two um, is pasteurized dairy. Number three is, and we, I didn't mention about pasteurized dairy and cheese particularly. It's got opioids in it, by the way. Literally opioids in it. That's why, like, it's so difficult. Like, cheese is so addictive. So, number two. Pasteurized dairy, number three, chocolate, number four, uh, is salt, okay? Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching. My sincere gratitude to our generous donors, people who just want to donate because, hey, they want to share the love in that way. If you would like to share the love in that way, it is highly appreciated. There's a link down below in the description for donations. I also offer one-on-one -on -one consulting services a and um, interestingly enough a lot of those consulta consultations are people wondering about food related things so i see this is is a is a hot topic these days so link down below in the description for consulting and uh instagram saeed mobile just my name uh and that's about it until next time may the force be with you